So it's been one week since Hurricane Olaf graced La Paz with its presence. And I wanted to kind of talk about what it's like down here. So I was up in Oregon when Olaf came through and really it hit Cabo so much more than it hit La Paz. La Paz got some rain, a lot of wind, but Cabo really got hit with kind of the brunt of the hurricane. When it hit Cabo, it was a a category two hurricane. It had just crossed into category two. Once it got over land, it started to dissipate pretty quickly, but there was some damage in La Paz, but uh, not too bad. I've seen a number of videos coming out of Puerto Vallarta, which was hit by a hurricane about two or three weeks ago, which seems like things there were much worse. So I arrived into the Cabo airport. Uh, I guess that was like four days post hurricane and you could not see any semblance of having there ever been a storm there. So really Cabo cleaned up at least the airport pretty quickly. I'm sure there were other parts of Cabo that I, I didn't go into. I drove or I, I got a, a ride directly from the airport into La Paz. But upon getting here, a few of the things that I saw. So one was there was still some water and there still is some water over the roads, but nothing that you can't just drive through. And locals are being very cautious driving uh, almost seems too slow uh, through these areas with water over the roads, but I'm sure they've been through the hurricane where the roads actually did have a lot of water over them and it was a little less safe before. So water on the roads. Also, there is some sand and mud on some of the roads, some of the highways, the highway between Centenario and La Paz. It's down to one lane in each direction in some areas just because the outer lanes have gotten covered in sand. And my taxi driver from Cabo said that he had driven someone out the other road towards Los Barriles and Barriles and it was completely covered in sand and he actually got stuck and his passengers had to help push him out of the sand. But there's a lot of heavy equipment moving around on the roads to kind of make sure everything is getting cleaned up. I've seen a few trees down, including one in my yard, actually two in my yard. The first one is something that are that that fell down the night of the hurricane. And my my caretaker uh, took a little video of that and shared it with me. But then there's one more that I noticed. It didn't fall much. It fell just a little bit, but it's resting on the house. So it needs some pruning now to get it back off the house. Lots of billboards were just gone. So there's these big metal structures down here. The billboards are just kind of like a frame and then they put a like a Tyvek across the frame and so all that stuff got shredded. So the billboards are mostly gone, starting to come back slowly. Also in terms of that fabric that is missing, I noticed at the Walmart, which has covered area, these, these kind of covered blue flags that, that provide shade for the parking lot, about 60% of them were gone. So definitely they did not take any precautions. I'm not sure what happened if this hurricane just kind of snuck up but they definitely didn't take that stuff down and the majority of them are gone now. So the hurricane came through on Thursday night and uh, so almost a week later, Wednesday night, I went downtown and there were a few stoplights out and it is a little bit dangerous because it's hard to see stoplights uh, even when they're working. So when they're out, it's easy to miss them. Still lots of construction going on at the house and I will show you that in a future video. But uh, the stoplights, a few of them were out, hard to see, but the drivers down here are pretty good at working with a four-way stop because there's so many four-way stops. There's not a lot of stoplights down here. And Wednesday night was the start of the Independence Day celebrations. And so this year, 2021, there is COVID precautions going on. So the big celebrations were canceled, but there were still people out and about, a lot of folks driving down the streets of La Paz. Really what it looked like was a typical Sunday night. That's kind of the big party night down here where everyone goes out and is hanging out on the Malacan or driving down the Malacan. So a number of people with flags, but nothing different than you'd see probably in a Southern United States state on a typical Wednesday night. Lots of bands playing and lots of folks out to eat, but the president did request that folks spend the Independence Day celebration celebrating with their families inside, watching him and the celebrations on TV. It was all over the radio. <laughs> Viva México! Viva! Viva México! Viva! The celebrations here of Independence Day actually start the day before Independence Day. So it's actually kind of nice. Like their typical big going out night is the day before they have the day off. But 
it's uh, it starts with the um, Grito de Dolores, uh, which is the cry of Dolores, which is, I believe, the town where the the revolution started. I think it took like 10 years to finish, but it started around, I think, 11 o'clock at night. And so that's when they ring the bells and the president yells out and everyone says, Viva Mexico. And it's you know, a good time, but it was, it was broadcast on the radio. And so I did get to see a little bit of Independence Day here in Mexico, but not that much impact from the storm just one week later. But I am back down here for about two weeks. So I'm making lots of videos that I'll be releasing over some time. If you have any requests for things that I should cover while I'm here, be sure to put those down in the comments down below. And if you're new to this channel, push subscribe. I love helping people pre-tire in Mexico, get here before you turn 65, and also just check out one of the videos over here. I'll see you in the next video.